Hey, hi and welcome to this part three of Burnside Lemma series. If you have not checked out the previous two videos, please go ahead and check them out and then come back to this particular video. We're going to take a medium level application question of Burnside Lemma in this particular video, which is related to cubes. So let's say you have a cube given to you with six faces, normal cube, uh, more like if you think about a Rubik's cube, more like that itself. Okay. And we want to color the faces of the cubes with n different colors, right? So you have a cube, but Rubik's cubes are six different colors is already painted over on top of it. But let's say we want to paint a like newly uncolored cube with six faces with let's say n different colors. And if you have a cube in your hand, you can kind of rotate it to any particular, you can rotate it to any particular direction altogether. And you can kind of see how uh, things look from let's say this side some side okay and then if you want like let's say if you colored these three things as uh, white and then uh, like if you rotate it like this then again it's kind of the similar diagram and if you kind of have colored let's say all of these four let's say with green and then the top and bottom with white even if you rotate it like this is the same cube right so all of those are colorings are all same so you have to kind of find the number of different cubes that you can get using n colors right so and you can rotate the cube like this Note over here that we have only rotation, but it's a 3D rotation. It's not re really a 2D rotation like the previous two problems where we had something placed on the table or what was a chessboard kind of structure. But in this case, we have a 3D rotation allowed, but we cannot really mirror it off because mirroring kind of changes the whole dimension altogether. Like it's kind of flips it inside out, which is not really allowed in this problem. So it's just rotation allowed around different kind of axes in this kind of a cube. And we have to find the number of ways to color it off. So till now we have talked about how to find different axes and how to find the number of ways to color so that around that axis for a particular group, you can, uh, you have a consistent coloring and how to find out the number of fixed elements and then kind of find out the number of ways to color. We have talked about this multiple number of times, but in a 3D cube, it's a bit difficult to find the number of axes and stuff. So if you want, you can pause and try this particular problem and find out a formula for n different colors. For just to check if you have found out it correctly, you can test with n equal to three and for three, the number of ways to color a cube with three colors it comes out to 57. So this is something you can test if you could find it out correctly or not. So pause the video right over here if you have not. Also, if you're continuing to watch the solution, that means there is some value to this video. Please like the video and subscribe to the channel. Let's move ahead. So again, going back to the basics steps that we have, identify the axis of rotations, no reflections in this particular case. So we strike this off. Uh, we don't really need reflections, rotations only. And then for every, and for a particular rotation, we kind of see, okay, uh, if you kind of have this as a pinching point and then you rotate this around this, then you see that like all of these faces might get same color. These two are kind of fixed at its own place. So what are the fixed elements for that particular group or that particular rotation that you are considering right now around a particular axis? And then put formula of the Burnside dilemma that we have talked about multiple number of times in the previous problems, right? So let's look into how we do that for this problem. So if you think about the axis of rotations for this particular problem, if you have this cube, uh, so we can, okay, that's, that's the cube falling off. Okay. Anyways, so if you have this particular cube pinched off across this, we can rotate it around this. So this is like a face axis. The first one that is kind of drawn in this, in this one, then you have pinching across this uh, around this particular thing, and then you can rotate it off. Right. So you can see face over here Then that face comes again back and then again back. So there are three kind after three rotations, you come back to the same stuff. Okay. Then you have something like this edge over here, right? Where like, where you have uh, this pinched over here at this, this two axis, and then you have this face. And then if you rotate it by 180 degree, you kind of get back to the same kind of a structure. And then if you rotate it back, you get the same face back, right? So there are these three different kind of, uh, axis of rotations or reflection. Reflection is not there in this case, rotation that are there in a 3d cube. So we are finding out 3d axis right now in the previous two problems, there were only 2d axis. So these three axes are there. Let's try to identify the number of fixed elements for the particular phase rotation. So for a phase rotation, you have different kind of uh, groups altogether. You can rotate it by zero degree, uh, which is the fixed element. You have one 90 degree. Okay. Then this phase will come to this particular part, obviously 180 degree. It goes back to this and then 270 degree. Okay. So if you take uh, zero degree, then everything remains in its own place, no matter how many times you do it. So you have, um, let's say the total number of uh, 
six faces with each having n options. So n options per face. So there are three, uh, six faces. So n to the power six, right? Plus 90 degree rotations are allowed. So uh, if you rotate it by 90 degree, this goes over here. This goes to the next one. Again, it goes to this one. And then this comes back to this face. And the top and bottom are kind of fixed if you pinch and pinch them across this way. So they are independent part. So if you color the top with some color, color the one of the sides with one color and then the bottom, then if and if you rotate it, you get all the sides colored. So you have three different faces to be colored plus N cube, right? And if you see the number of Faces that are free for 180 degree rotations, then it's gonna be equal to, let's say, this. Uh, gonna color it differently. So this face that is over here, and the face that is at the back. Okay, if you rotate it by 180 degree, they become the same, and uh, in these two become same and so on. So if you you have kind of four elements, the top. If you think about this. You pinch it off. If you rotate by 120 degrees, so the two faces become same, and these two faces are kind of same after coloring. Like if you rotate by 180 degree, so there are four different faces to be kind of considering considered right now. So n to the power four kind of structure is there. Plus 270 degree. It's very similar to 90 degree. Just uh, as we have analyzed the previous problems, it's going to be n cube. But now there is a really interesting thing that comes into this particular problem where there are multiple different axes of rotations, right? So if you rotate it by zero degree, okay you kind of having the same cube at its own place. Now, let's say we have a different kind of an axis, which uh, let's say you have a cube. Let's see, let's kind of remove these off a bit. I'm just gonna bring the cube over here, remove these chunk off from this place. Okay, that removed off the cube as well. Let's revert it back. So if you have this cube and think about, let's say, this a face axis altogether like this, right? On this face. If you rotate it by zero degree, the cube remains the same. So should we count this n to the power six twice? Like, is it two different counting that we need to do? Like no rotation on this axis, no rotation on this axis is same as no rotation on this axis, right? So we don't count them separately. And that's something you have to keep in mind while you're applying Burnside lemma. Okay. So that's why counting it this way for just a single face and multiplying with six is wrong. This is something you should not do. The ideal way to do this would be, let me uh, maybe remove this off and then uh, let's bring it off to this place. And then we're going to talk about what is the actual correct way to do these kind of problems, right? Because just counting out for every face and multiplying with six will not work in this case because the cube is altogether becoming the same. So we kind of need to find the number of fixed elements, right? And by the definition of fixed element, it's basically how we are rotating it and how we are kind of getting the new cube. Zero degree across this axis and this, this axis is the same kind of stuff. So we don't count it twice. So what we do is for 3D kind of cases is one new rotation altogether. It's all fixed, zero degree, okay? So n is to the power six, okay? Then you have, there are six faces, right? There are six particular faces, but this axis perforates this particular face as well, right? So you have one, one axis per two phase. So there are three different axes, okay? Three different face axes, face axes. And across a face, if you rotate it by 90 degree, that's a possibility. Rotate it by, let's say, um, 180 degree, that is a possibility, okay? And uh, 270 degree, that is a possibility, right? So for these things, you have three different axes that are possible. One this, one uh, this, and then one this. So that are possible. So this is how you count out the face kind of structures. So this zero degree need not be counted across all different faces because not, the cube is not changing. So this identity element needs to be handled separately. Rest all, you can multiply with the number of different axes that are there. So there are three axes that are over here. And even multiplying with six, just by seeing the face is not correct because you have to see the Axis that goes from this face is same as the axis from this face. So one axis gets counted only once. So n to the power six is over here. 90 degree, 90 degree, 270 degree. Okay. And for 90 degree, we have, uh, we found out the formula, right? For 90 degree, we had uh, like all the side faces becoming same. So you had this cube, side face, 90 degree, side faces all become same by rotation. And then top two is there. So n cube is there. Uh, plus you have 270, uh, this 180 degree. 270 is behave similar to 90 degrees, so it's going to be 
again plus nq and 180 degree is going to be like uh, you have four different positions okay this first top bottom this becomes equal to the opposite one and this becomes equal to this one so there are four different faces to be colored so n to the power of four right so this is there and uh, this is going to be there are three such axes so if you kind of sum up this particular part there is n to the power six there is uh, six n to n cube i'm just adding this is two n cube plus into six six n cube plus six n square that kind of term is over here sorry three n, n to the power four three into there was n to the power four so three and four so these are the terms that kind of get, gets into the numerator of that bond side lemma if you altogether remember okay so zero degree n to the power six no axis altogether required this is just the identity element so when you are counting the identity element don't think about any axis so across all axes the identity element remains the same then you go into the axes and then kind of see the rotations that are there okay so for this axis you have 30 90 degree 180 degree 200 degree and so on and there are three such axes so it's 2n cube plus n to the power 4 multiplied by 3 so these are the terms that come from like by this particular face axis okay let's move to this corner axis so if you think about this particular cube over here and if i pinch it off so if you think about this corner one okay you rotate it once and then so this is there rotate it you again get the same structure you rotate it you again get the same structure so these three faces are kind of if you think about these three faces they are going to come to each in each in each other's position so this gets rotated to this one and this gets rotated to this one so on a top view is something like let's say this kind of a structure right 120 degree each okay so that is there then we think about about this particular axis okay like this particular corner axis you have um let's say you can rotate. so this is a triangular kind of structure there is this cube it, it will look something like this i'm not really drawing it properly but it will if you flatten it up a bit it looks something like this and then these rotate to this this rotate to this this rotate to this similarly there is a lower side as well for the cube so if there is this cube these three become same okay then similarly the lower three become same so there are like two different faces to be colored and rest all the three in their own horizon kind of get colored by that particular stuff itself so there are two faces so it's all together um an n square kind of a term okay it's an n square term okay and uh, there are um let's say for 180 degree you have two different faces again if you think about 240 degree so we don't really count the zero degree because zero degree is like keeping it same that got counted in other axis so don't count it again for 240 degree uh, this will become this and then this will become this this will become come back to this if you remember the first triangular problem it was very similar so it was it is going to be very similar to 120 degree is going to be n square right so this is going to be for one different diagonal how many diagonals are there for how many corner to corner kind of a diagonal is there in a cube so if you think about it there are one two three four okay so four uh, corners on the top and for every corner you will have a opposite corner in the bottom so you don't really count all the corners you have one corner and then to its opposite they get they get paired and get counted so you don't so this pairing of opposite corners get counted only once so there are four such axes and for each of them you have n square plus n square so it's in total eight n square as the term okay so that's there for the corner ones Next, you have an edge to edge, which was uh, this particular kind of in case you pinch it over here and then you see this, right? Something like this. So uh, this rotation happens. So over here, you can see that this face remains uh, so over this edge. You have multiple different possibilities. You have to rotate it by 180 degree for sure. And then this be face becomes equal to the opposite one and the top becomes equal to this. This becomes equal to the lower side. So there are these two becoming same these two becoming same and the face opposite to each other becoming same so there are three different faces all together that becomes same to so be uh, there one and the back side is two okay this top one three sorry one one okay this becomes two two okay and the lower side this side is like three three okay and if you rotate it across that so there are three faces so it's like an n cube term it's an n cube total ways to Kind of color if you color one then this will get uh, fixed by automatically using that same color two three right so three colors to be chosen so n cube options and um how many such edge pairs are there think about it 
how many h pairs are there how many of these axes are going to be there so again uh, just use the same logic that you have total in total there are in a cube uh, 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 and then 9 10 11 12 12 axes but every axis every edge sorry not axis edges and for every edge it gets paired with an opposite edge so in total there are 12 edges so there are six such axes so there are into six axes such axes so in total this becomes 6 into n cube okay so that's the term that will be there in the numerator so if we kind of combine this back right so there is first of all an n to the power 6 for the fixed face uh, like fixed cube identity element right please don't count the zero degree rotation for different axes separately it's going to be counted only once next we have face with 90 degree rotation that gave us if you remember three uh, there was how many such face axes are there three multiplied by this are the two same these three these four become same so there is four three different colors to be chosen so n q okay plus for this if you have 180 degree rotation obviously there is going to be another n q for 270 degree rotation 90 degree and 270 degree generally behaves the same plus 180 degree rotation this becomes equal to the opposite this becomes equal to the opposite and then there are two so n to the power four okay this is there or this is for the face one this is for corner let's not really this is this is not really n i should write n to the power six separately identity this is for face this is for corner and for corner we wrote if we go back to the slide of corners one we wrote that there are four such axes and there was 120 degree rotation and 240 degree rotation so in total we get n 2 into n square per axis 8 n square in total let's write that out 8 n square and edges if we go back so we had n cube per axis and there are six such axis so 6 n cube right uh, and if we have this three terms let's kind of combine so these are all the things that we add on the numerator so it's going to be n to the power 6 plus 3n cube, 3n cube, 6n cube, 12n cube plus um, there is n to the power of 3 and 3n to the power 4 as is also there 3 into n to the power 4 plus 8n square right this is there and how what do you divide it by what do you divide it by let's go back and try to like correct back how many axes were there so one is identity one three axes over here three eight uh so corner to corner there were it was two n square multiplied by four that's why it's good to write it this way so that you can count the axes separately so there is um so this is so not not really a, like this is going to be n square right and then there was into two for the number of um for 180 degree and 240 degree and then there was four such axes so the total number of things that are over here is eight okay and uh, for uh, this it's gonna be let's say six which is six right because there are six such axes so uh, in total if you add these up it's gonna become four or uh, in Okay, so this is going to be 1, then 3, uh, oh sorry, this is going to be, there are, there are 3 individual groups over here, right? So you have to count it, 9, right? And, yeah, so uh, this is there, 9 is there, because there are like 3 different groups, right? And then there are, it, there are 3 such axes for each one of them, similar to this one. So you have uh, 10, 18, 24. Okay, so you have to in total 24. Okay, a very neat way to do this, like if you uh, could understand how this is working, is by putting n equal to 1 in this. Because if you have one color, there is exactly one way to do it. And the numerator should be divisible by denominator. So you should have, you should get the answer as 1. So the if you put n equal to 1, you should get the denominator. If you are doing it everything correctly. But what I would advise is to count them separately and then check if it's actually dividing it or not for every different value. Okay. So the final formula is n to the power 6 plus 3 and 4 plus uh, 12 n cube plus 8 n square divided by 24. That's the final formula. 
let's check it out i'm not 100% sure it should work i guess let's check n to the power 6 plus the value is 3 n to the power 4 plus uh, this was 12 n cube plus 8 n square right i mean i hope this is correct Uh, for n equal to 3, we're going to put the value, so it's going to be 3 to the power 6 plus 3 to the power 3 into 3 to the power 4 plus 12 into 3 to the power 3 plus 8 into 3 square. Mm. So this is going to be to the power 5 over here. You So this is 3 to the power 5. This is 3 to the power 6. This is 12. So uh, you can take out a 3 out of it. So it's 4 into 3 to the power 3 plus uh, 8 into 3 square. Right. So we can easily take out 3 square if we want to. But um, let's see. This is going to be some numerical calculation. Let's keep this uh, 9 minus 3 square. Later on, we will comp compute this number so that this becomes 3 to the power 4. A bit, bit easier to calculate. And then we have this plus this is going to be um, 7, this, this there. In fact, I guess I should, I should calculate this on a calculator. Not really that fast on maths. Let me see if I can pull up a computer code. Let's check it out. So let's see. Mm. 3 to the power 6 plus uh, 3 to the power 5. I'm just putting out the reduced formula itself. Plus uh, 12 into 3 to the power 3. I think I wrote like this should have been this term over here should have been 3 to the power 5. But anyways, not a problem. We will take care of that. Plus, uh, this is going to be, let's divide it by this. We need to divide it by 24, right? So 3 to the power 3 is there, plus uh, it's going to be 8 into 3 to the power 2 by 24, which gives us 57. Nice. That's pretty much correct. So that's, that's the value. We put this out, we get 57. And if you go back to this, uh, I suppose the main slide told you that solution was 57, right? So we did it correctly. Oof, that's a difficult problem. But anyways, now you have a full idea on how to find out different kind of stuff. How to now find out the total number of elements that are there and which all groups that we find. Zero degree element, find axis for every axis, different rotations. Another axis, all rotations another axis all rotations find the number of axes into the number of rotations possible for everything that goes into the denominator for every kind of rotation find out the phases that become equivalent after the rotation and then color each e one of the uh, each equivalent ones so that gives you the total number of ways to color so that like it is consistent with that rotation okay and uh, finally just take that in the numerator and then get the denominator and then finally get the answer so this was the final answer for any cube so this is for n different colors. If you have to cube uh, color a cube, how many ways are there with rotations taken consider into consideration? Pretty difficult problem, but a really nice closed form, right? Okay. So this is mostly like the hardest the 3D versions can go into. But for most of the problems that I have personally seen, you're going to get a 2D version for competitive programming. And for 2D versions, you mostly need uh, like a single rotational rotation and reflection kind of axis, a single rotational axis is there. And that's why taking this zero degree into that one itself was not a problem. But that's why I took up this example so that you are not confused with identity elements altogether. Don't count them in all axis. And then we have uh, a particular cube way. Uh, 
for the two for the two D ones we will generally get reflection. For three D ones also we can we could have had reflections and then could have solved this problem. But let's say we just want to find the rotation one. So that's all for this particular problem. In the next video, we're gonna take a really interesting problem, a very common one in Burnside lemma. But a lot of questions are created on this one, and you should definitely know how this works. Okay, so. Stay tuned into this particular series. If you have not subscribed to the channel, subscribe it, like this video if you have got some value out of it. And in the next video, we take up this necklace problem. Okay, so see you there.